Okay. Amen. 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 So we're going to go ahead and get started here. Amen. I'm going to start sharing the video. Guys, I want to welcome you all. Welcome you all. Amen. Grab your pens and your notebook because we're going to get ready. We're going to dive in this word tonight talking about the um, spirit of extramarital affairs. Okay. Uh, so we just want to go ahead and uh, get started on that. And um, amen, amen. So praise God, praise God for you all. Praise that you all had a blessing day. And I pray that the favor of the Lord is upon you all on today. Amen. Oh, man. Amen. So we're going to um, play this song. Just allow it to minister to you, uh, although it's uh, instrumental. But I like the song. It's by, um, I think his name is Je uh, Jason Nelson, to be exact. And uh, the song is called Forever Committed. And I think this song just goes in tight with uh, what we're going to be talking about uh, as well. So we're going to go ahead and store the music. Amen. Amen. All right.
been so long at first. And I was submitted to my husband's back and my family. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Fran, if you're in position, go ahead. We're ready when you are. Amen. Amen. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Father God, we just come, Father God. We just come, Father God, ready to magnify you, God, and ready to worship in Jesus' name, God. Father God, we thank you for this word. We thank you, Father God, that we have ears to hear, Father God, and that we can continue, Father God, to receive your word. Father God, let it fall on good ground, penetrating, Father God, our heart. Father God, that we magnify you, God, that, that we continue, God, to put on the whole armor of Christ in Jesus' name. As we stand in our armor, God, let us have the mind of Christ in Jesus' name, God, that we open our hearts to you, God, that we say, open the eyes of my heart in Jesus' name, that you would search me, God, that you, Father God, would, would change me from the inside out in Jesus' name, God, that we continue, God, to bring the flesh flesh under submission, God, and open our spirits to you in Jesus' name, that you penetrate, Father God, every area of our heart, our mind, and our soul, God, that we lift up all that we are to you, God, and that we magnify you, God, ready to, to just hear from you, God, from the throne of heaven in Jesus' name, God. Let our hearts be receptive, God. Let our ears be open to hear your voice, God, and let our hearts, Father God, be transformed, God. Let our minds, Father God, be strengthened in the joy of the Lord in Jesus' name, God. We cut off the head of the enemy, God. We cut off the head, Father God, of distraction. We cut off the head, Father God. Of, of the enemy that would distract us in, in technology, that would cause a disturbance, God. We cut off the head and we muzzle the enemy in Jesus' name. We bind him, Father God. We bind the enemy, God, and we muzzle him in Jesus' name. We call forth, Father God, the angels from the courts of heaven, God, to stand guard and that this word, Father God, will go forth, that it would change and penetrate, Father God, marriages, God, that you join together, God. Marriages that will turn out beautiful. Marriages that will be rescued. Marriages that will be restored. Marriages that will be strengthened under the mighty hand of our living and 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 magnificent God, all powerful God in Jesus' name. We just magnify you. We worship you, God, for you are good. You are good in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. I thank you, oh God. Oh, my God, my God, I thank you. We worship you, God. Hallelujah. I uh, thank you, God, that our, our secret weapon is to worship. Huh? Yes, God. Woo, my God. I, 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 got, I got a feeling. I, yes, I got a feeling tonight. Lesson is about to, oh, we about to sucker punch the enemy. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I know we're about to expose the enemy on tonight. Amen. So I'm telling you guys, if y'all haven't shared this video, this video is going to help open some eyes of the blinded. Okay, it's going to open some eyes. It's going to expose some things that's, uh, that is, is dear, dearly, uh, I mean, that's truly causing a lot of strongholds with these marriages, okay? We're going to expose the devil. As I always tell my team, we're going to shame the devil and we're going to tell the truth on today. Yes, we are. We're going to put him, we're going to put him to flight, matter of fact, amen. We're going to serve him his eviction notice because he does not have no power. He don't have no authority to even mess with our marriages, all right? So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started. We're going to talk about on last week, uh, we're talking about the stiffness of the heart, hardness of the heart, same thing. And I just want them to kind of bring, you know, talk about last note, last week bonus notes. If you got the bonus notes on last week to share about that stiff neck, I'm a stiff neck, that hardness of the heart, go ahead and share unmute as well. Unmute as well, if you would be so kind, precious. 
Okay, I'm ready. Stiffness in the heart of marriage. And it says, best be prepared than unprepared. Stiffness, stiffness and hard heart are first cousins, and it's come from Leviathan and pride. Then Matthew 19 and 8, and Matthew 19 and 8. Who asked about divorce? And the Pharisees and religious leaders, and, the, and they said, the heart of God is compassion, unfailing love, mercy, loving. He came to save a wrench like me. And the greatest gift is love and the heart to forgive all. The plan of marriage is male and female. And to be united in marriage, unity, sh- and you, unity shall not be shut. Unity, okay. Matthew 19, 1 through 6. Matthew 19, 1 through 6. Heal them there. Jesus does it all. Whatever we need him, he, he is that. And then talked about, like, then you talk about how Satan came to tempt Jesus and the Pharisees came to test Jesus as well. And how have you tested Jesus? And what are you going to see? Have you read? Then made them male and female and that we will leave to parents and say bye to friends and let go of the things and to unite marriage. One flesh, two becomes one. And then you talk about like what God has joined together in the 6 a.m. Mondays prayer call which is amazing then nothing should separate then what god has joined together quit making excuses taking responsibility and then we have to pray and intercede for your spouse and step up step up your own and own your mistakes and then you have to that the damage is already caused and through divorce and and how do i know my heart has been hardened and you gave some examples and they said lacking the ability to discern the lacking ability to discern and it's a red flag and sensitive to sin no fear of god fail to follow god's command argumentative self-importance pride when you talk about like what is the what is the root of pride thinking of more of self rebellion disobedience is first cousins control haughtiness fear anxiety lack of trust self-reliance shame self-worth Entitlement, people pleasing, prayerlessness, hypocrisy. And then talk about like rebellion is the same of witchcraft, which comes from First Samuel 15, 23. 15, 23. Then you talked about like what is easily offended and lacking ability to forgive, resenting, then a carnal heart or thinking about the heart and what's in thinking as a heart thinks you speak out through your mouth. And then a hard heart and that, but not in love. And that we have like that like haven't been happy for a long time and that my time must be happy and that God has given us permission and things like that. And then after he separates business, stubbornness, and pride has a long list and sarcastic, a very long list. And he talks about like a lack of understanding, <clears throat> which has a many verses, beauty, life-giving words in Matthew 8, 17, Matthew 8, 17, and the disciples experienced miracles firsthand is your heart hardened and might fail to understand willpower. And then you ask God to uncover hidden thoughts and ask God to do this. And then God is not the author of confusion, fasting, and what is the purpose for marriage and quit being complacent moving forward. Then another one was bitterness and resentment caused by others can be caused by a simple misunderstanding. And then... That then vault into okay, communication, effective communication, get rid of all bitterness, and then Ephesians 4 31 through 32. Then be kind and compassionate, forgiving one another as Christ forgive you, and deflection. Then you talk about isolation from God and others, and then dreading time. Then Genesis 4 and Cain and Abel, and quit isolating from God, quit isolating from others, and you talk about think about worship, refocusing to forgive. And then we talk about pray, then Colossians 3 and 3, Colossians 3 and 3, Matthew 6, 14 through 15, Matthew 6, 14 through 15, then forgive others when God, when you forgive others, God will forgive you. Luke 17, 3 to 4, Luke 17, 3 to 4. And then the enemy will replay, then quit rewind, let him quit rewind the tape and quit replaying that and walking in true forgiveness. And when we hold that with still not forgiveness. Then he talked about indifference and then how we shut down to God, church, and others, and then and embraced unconcern, allowing for a turnaround. And God uses indifference to for the world to see a fire and causes praise to flow. And then talk about pride again, the heart and the heart. And 
And then can you handle the truth? Daniel 5.20, Daniel 5.20, and then refuse to serve or to be ministered to. And that's all the notes that I got. Okay. Amen. Okay. Pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. All right. So um, with the video, we're going to go ahead. We're going to move on. That was, I, um, we're going to talk about the video that was emailed to you or either text to you. And I think the video, oh, it, it was the four step uh, stages, I'm sorry, of sexual sin by uh, the Lion of Judah. That was the uh, video uh, that you were for, to do for homework. So if Fran, if you got um, got that, uh, got a chance to watch that video, like to hear your feedback and what you, you know, it was a short video as well. That's so such a blessing that I did a short video with you all. Yes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, wow. <laughs> I'm like, wow, she's getting really good. <laughs> it was, it was, it was, every minute was filled with lots and lots of revelation. Um, let me see, let me grab my book here open my book okay there were four levels of um the four stages of sexual sin and um and 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 the author had opened up with sexual sin is nothing new and and most people Okay. Did we lose you, sweetheart? I see your mic still yeah. going. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. I think. Okay. Um, and then, uh, uh, and, 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 it, and it starts with adultery and fornication, which is level one, and it starts with the eyes. And it begins with the eyes, and it could determine your next actions for the next minute, the next day, or even the next month. Because the eyes are the light of the body, and it's also, um, it, it is connected to your mind and the body, and it's an, it's an, it's an eye gate for lust to come in. And then it turns into a stronghold. And these strongholds, um, they won't leave without a fight. And it's usually a, a, a struggle in deliverance because of the brain and the mind. And then he went into where um, King David and Bathsheba and how King David was on the balcony. And he came out of uh, 2 Samuel 11 and 2, 2 Samuel 11 and 2 the KJV and how King David saw the nakedness of Bathsheba as he looked down from his balcony and his brain concentrated on the nakedness and and stored the images in his brain and you know his his brain told um his eyes told his brain that he, uh, David saw a beautiful woman bathing and that was the, the feeding ground for fornication and adultery and you know and and it's like okay what are you watching and what are you looking at and then he came out of Matthew 5 27 through 28 Matthew 5 27 through 28 and and it just I'm just uh, paraphrasing anytime any anybody looks at a a woman with lust in his eyes, or if you're a woman and you look at a man with lust in your eyes, you have already committed adultery. And um, level two was action because the mind and the brain registered now and it, and it starts in the youth. And when, our, and when we're young, you know, it, it's most youth cannot yield. Or if you're a youth in, in, a, in, a, in an adult body, 
depending on when you were saved, you can still be a babe in Christ. So, and then it, and then it um, starts in the heart. You start acting upon it and then it starts building up. And then that's when fornication is being introduced. You don't care about the consequences or the action or the destruction always leads to punishment. And then level three is where, you know, the fornicate or the fornication and the ultimate adultery actually takes place and you become one flesh the person that you had um a, a sexual sin with you become one flesh with that person um, according to first corinthians six and six. First corinthians six and six that you've joined yourself with the person you slept with and then each and every one of them so however many partners that person has had and um the declaration of of both becoming one so you start carrying the problems of others and this is uh vital when you have a one night stand and number two you join themselves with other problems and sometimes you think you know why is this happening to me and you're not sure how you got them so so when when you, whenever you tie yourself to a person, you start taking on their their demons, and um, and the only way to break the bondage is with prayer. And um, he gave an example how two couples um, came together. They were you know they were together, and then the guy's income was slashed in half and then they broke up and then everything went back to normal and then they got back together again and then the same thing happened so there was spiritual implications that was involved and you know and a lot of people think oh it's just coincidence but it's it you know things happen in the spirit before it happens physically and then level four is the shame the addiction and the struggle and how um, he he came back to King David as an example from Second Samuel eleven three to five, Second Samuel eleven three through five, and how David um, had impregnated Bathsheba, and he had to kill Uriah, uh, Bathsheba's husband, uh, because he was stuck in the relation. And most people, you know, are stuck in relationships that they don't want to be in. And they have to fight to get free. But glory be to God, if, according to Ephesians 6 and 12, Ephesians 6 and 12, we have the power of God and the whole armor of God. So to recap, uh, it was to protect your eyes. Be careful what you watch. Be careful what you look at. And, and and try to, you know, stop it at stage one with your eyes and to remove lustful movies or TV shows because you're just opening the door wide open for that demon of lust to come in. And according to Job 31 and 1, Job 31 and 1, that we have made a covenant with our eyes why should we look at another person? And it, it also um, teaches us to discipline our eyes from the opposite sex. So um, it, he had just recapped, you know, to move on, don't look. And there's different types of looking. When you're driving, there's a looking of being aware. And then there's another looking where your mind starts wandering and fantasizing. And that's where lust lurks at the door. The demon of lust only needs that door to come in. According to Ephesians 4 and 27, Ephesians 4 and 27, we don't give place, any place to the devil. You give him an itch, he will take a mile. So. Um, you know, it's a valuable lesson when David was messing around with another man's wife and that never ends well because, you know, most people, um, they found themselves in marriage because of lust. They have money, um, maybe, you know, it was a money issue and um, decisions 
And it all comes back down to our decisions. Um, you know, what am I looking at? Where are my eyes wandering? Um, it all comes back to down, down to the decision of what are you looking at? In Jesus' name, amen. 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 That was good. That was good. All right. Uh, Liz, do you have anything to add to that? Or you, you pretty much, she don't say she covered everything, which she did, portion yeah. of it. Okay. You did them. I got them. Um, Fran, you do an amazing job as ever and beautiful as always. And I just love how he started out like sexual sin is nothing new in that and how the church today is turning a blind eye to it and that we're accepting it. And one thing that really stood out for me that is also practicing among fellow church members. And it's like, yeah. and then he gave the four things, which the first one was the eyes. It always begins with the eyes. And what are we focusing on? I think sometimes we forget, like, if you focus too much on something, it can, like, oh, distract, can be a distraction too. And then the power of the eyes and, the, and that the eyes are the light of the body and the spirit of lust can enter in the stronghold of lust and that the eyes are powerful, that the brain and the mind are connected. And that's what caused David to sin, that he looked and saw and he thought. And then the eyes have seen and then 2 Samuel 11 and 2, 2 and Samuel 11 and 2, and the for, fornication and adultery is, not, is already knocking on his door. And what are you watching and what are you looking at and are you opening the doors to lust matthew 5 27 to 28 matthew 5 27 to 28 second samuel 11 3 to 4 second samuel 11 3 to 4 and it all started by looking number two was the act and act accordingly and that in the heart it comes out eventually in what is built up and that we don't care about the consequences and that we don't care that that we want to experience a sinful act and that we partake in the pleasure and that and that's the end of that adultery is heavy in the spirit and in physical and then number three was the invisible stage and the spiritual implication stage first corinthians 6 and 16 first corinthians 6 and 16 that the two temp people shall be joined together and i had written down as a side note the temples be joined together and that you share yourself with the people you sleep with and that whatever affects them spiritually is affecting your life now, like a public announcement. And that the spiritual problems will be shaped with you. And that they are carrying other people's problems along with theirs. And that two will be joined one. And that, that they're joined with others, whoever you sleep with. And that we have to pray earnestly. And then I really like, like Fran just mentioned, the, with the two couples, with, with the guy with the income, he slept with her, came back, and it was a world of mess. And then number four was the mess and regret stage and that there is shame, addiction, struggle. And that David threw, went through a lot in the stage and people being stuck in they cannot get out and it's a struggle to change and it's a fight to be free in Ephesians 6 and 12 and that the, Ephesians 6 and 12 and that we have to have the power of God to accept. And then he talked about like the full armor of God, Ephesians 6, 13 through 16, Ephesians 13, 6, 13, through 16 and that we cannot fight it alone and that you need Jesus to help and that we have to accept Jesus and don't let the world keep you bound protect your eyes remove anything that will make you lust don't water certain things Job 31 and 1 Job 31 and 1 and we cannot get through life with our eyes closed and that we don't have to keep looking and that don't look and move forward and that there are different types of looking Less looking and normal looking like with the car. And that all fornication and adultery started by one look. It only just takes one look and the spirit of lust can enter in. Ephesians 4.27, Ephesians 4.27 and 2 Samuel 11, 1 to 2 and 2 Samuel 11, 1 to 2 started with one look and then make them make, and like I said, I got in as well, make them make decisions they regret. In the spirit of lust in first samuel 11 3 through 5 first samuel 3 11 3 through 5 and that lust makes people look silly and dumb decisions marriage are destroyed people marrying the wrong people due to lust and the person you marry is the most important decision you will you will, you will ever make and has lust ever caused you to make silly decisions and just don't look and those are my notes 
Okay. Amen. All right. That's good. That's good. Okay. All right. Well, that is a blessing. Um, that ends um, the video and we summarize, summarized last week's lesson as well. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the next session and you guys know what time it is. That's right. It's no time taken. Yes, it is. It's time to get your ink pen and your notebook out ready because I just want you guys. Oh, and also I want to make one correction. Uh, I think Fran had gave a scripture on uh, where she talked about level three, the, the, the stage three, we talked about invisible and the correct scripture was first Corinthians chapter six and 16. Talked about that prostitute. Yeah. Yeah, I, I actually got that in in one in my notes. Uh, so yeah, so it's actually uh, the correction was First Corinthians six and sixteen. Yes, ma'am. All right. Do you not know that who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her body? And for he said, the two will become one flesh. Okay. So that's the scripture to that. I just wanted to correct that before we moved on. Um, so we're going to talk about this. This is what is the title on this one? Y'all. Okay. Creeping out on your soulmate. Creeping out on your soulmate. All right, Sister Liz, I need a good note taker on today as well. And um, and we're going to talk about, oh, thank you. Creeping out on your soul, soul S-O-U-L, your soul. Amen. There you go, mate. Uh-huh. Yeah, M-A-T-E. Okay, so we're going to first, we're going to talk about um, the spiritual consequences of, of cheating on your spouse. Okay. And let me pray first. Today, I, I just ask you, Lord, oh God, I just, I, I felt such a heavy warfare in just this lesson on today as it was going to be presented, oh God. But I pray, Father, that folks are going to get set free, oh God, and deliver. And I pray that your daughters, your prodigal daughters and sons are returning back home, oh God, to their first love, their youth love, oh God. First love is with you, oh God, and their youth love is with their spouse, oh God. So today I ask you, Jesus, that you, in Jesus' name that you will reclaim our marriage for for christ and we that no man and no woman no demon or no stronghold will separate what god has brought together satan we now command you in the name of jesus to get your hands off of these marriage foul spirit of adultery we command that you leave our spouse's mind now in the mighty name of jesus and your powers were broken two thousand years ago at the cross and you have no right to touch or torment our spouse's mind in the mighty name of jesus we now cover our marriage our home our family our children and all that we have under the blood of jesus christ and we claim completely respirations for our home our family and our marriage and we speak of healing between us and our spouse and let lord we ask that you will bring your healing touch upon these marriages and these relationships in the mighty name of jesus and we pray all these things in christ jesus name amen Amen. So according to, uh, I did a little research, according to a general uh, uh, social survey, it said 20% of men cheat comparing to 13% of women. Did you hear that? 20% of men cheat compared to 13% of women. So according to the LA Intelligent Detective Agency, the numbers are somewhat higher. And see, 30 is says 30 to 60 percent of marriage couple, married couples would cheat at least once in the marriage. And 74 percent of men uh, and 68 percent of the women admit that they cheated if it was guaranteed that they were never got caught. 60 percent of the uh, affairs started with with close friends or co-workers. Next, the average affair least lasted two years and 69% of the marriage break up as a result of an affair being discovered, okay? 
So I, I just had to throw the statistics on that, you know, because we were actually talking with another minister. We were talking about how the rate um, of divorce is higher in the church, you know, and, I, and we kind of came to that conclusion is it's the same as in the world. You know, it's 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 uh, definitely um, back. It's a neck to neck. You know, and why is that? You know, and 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 when we as Christian, uh, we we're supposed to be um, new creatures. We supposed to be new uh, creature in Christ. We supposed to be uh, that light. We supposed to be uh, to love. You know, uh, the unlovable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's go ahead real quick and we're going to jump into this lesson. We're going to talk about Matthew 5, 27 through 30. Matthew chapter 5, verse 27 through 30. And it said, you have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with a lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in the heart, in his heart. You hear that? in his heart so if your right eye causes you to sin tear it out and throw it away for it is better that you lose one of your members than that you that your whole body be thrown into hell see and your right hand causes you to sin cut it off and throw it away for it's better that you lose one of your members than you your whole body goes to hell see why aren't there the question i would ask why in that case why aren't there more one-eyed Christians walking around. Did y'all catch that? Interesting. See, Jesus was using unstate, uh, an overstatement to get his listeners' attention. See, sin is a deadly, serious, and radical uh, 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 measures of requiring to eliminate, el el eliminate it. So purposefully or requiring Recurring sin je jeopardizes spiritual, much like uh, what's the disease? Um, gangrene. Okay, it, it, it threatens uh, a physical. It threatens the physical health. Okay, so this was the seventh commandment. We're talking about not to commit adultery. Okay, so against God and your spouse. See, does infidelity mandate? Uh, a men, uh, a charge divorce. Okay, let me use that. And then in verse 32 of Matthew 5 and 32, it talks about this. We move same, uh, yeah, Matthew 5 verse 32. But see, Jesus permitted divorces in the, in the case of infidelity, but he doesn't require it. See, the, the, the contrary uh, where God, um, Grace and forgiveness was bringing healing into a relationship and a marriage ought to be restored rather than terminated. See, such a miracle is unthinkable from a human perspective, but God can bring respiration and hope even into the re relationship torn by pain, rejection, betrayal, and un unfaithfulness. See, adultery, if we gave the definition of what adultery is, it's an, it means and it's an affair that's outside your marriage committed either by a married uh, man or a woman is, is, uh, commit, that has uh, committed adultery. See, adultery is infidelity. It is the unfaithful act of having extramarital sex. And if a married man has an affair with an, another person apart from his wife, it is an adultery. If the married woman has an affair with any other person apart from her husband, it is adultery. Now, if y'all have any questions, you know you can write it in the chat and I will get back to it or write your uh, questions down, even on Facebook Live. Just save the, uh, the questions and I'll go and ask, answer your questions at the end because it's so important that I we dialogue in this uh, particular topic because it's definitely, definitely needed, okay? So Ezekiel uh, 23 and 37, Ezekiel 23 verse 37 said, but they have committed adultery and the blood is on their hands with the idols that they have committed adultery and they have even offered up them to for food for the children whom they had born to me. So in what sense have this has the child been born uh, to? Well, see, these children 
these children belong to him, but his wife had um, uh, had to sacrifice them to idols. See, Ezekiel 32, verse 36 through 49, if you read that whole uh, uh, passage, that whole uh, passage on uh, that from 36 to 49, uh, it says that the that just think about the prophet had links the, the the two kingdoms for this for his summary of God's judgment on them, but both kingdoms had copied the religious practice on their treaty partners, even to the extent of offering their children as a blood sacrifice to foreign gods. Lower G, okay, gods said they deliberately broke God's law and defiled his temple. See, both kingdoms act like prostitutes. And, ten, and it means enticing foreign nations so that they could join with them in union. There were immoral and ungodly. See, these foreign nations are likely to pleasure seeking men from the desert who brings jewelry and, or, and, or, and uh, different things, you know, ornaments and things to pay these prostitutes for their service. See, as a righteous judge uh, sentenced prostitutes to fit fitting uh, punishment. So God will now judge Judah. See, as an adulteress, uh, they were normally stoned to death and their property was buried. I mean, was burnt. I'm sorry. So will Jerusalem and her people be destroyed? See, adulteries, uh, adultery takes in two things. One is unfaithfulness against the legit partner and the other involves with the strangers of a defiling oneself with a stranger, such as a prostitute. We heard of Jezebel. And a Je and Jezebel, okay, Jezebel, let me go ahead and tell you what Jezebel assignment is. It's to take down the general of God. Did you hear that? Jezebel assignment is to take down the generals of God. See, this spirit will try to silence the apostles and prophets. Did you catch that, ladies? What's this assignment of Jezebel is? Okay, she, she typed it in, amen. It's the spirit will try to silence the apostles and the prophets. Amen, thank you, uh, Liz. And Deliah, let me tell you, Jezebel and Deliah is not a gender. It's a spirit, okay? See, uh, Deliah wanted to know the secret of your anointing and kill God's destiny. Well, both Jezebel and Deliah are both destiny, destiny's killers, okay? Remember that. See, these spirits quickly move in to destroy you by forcing you to violate the divine restraining order that God imposed on your life and calling. Oh, did you catch that? Ladies and gentlemen, see, did you understand the assignment of the spirit? And you see how a lot of people fall for this. Think about Samson and Deliah, how she, she was very persistent to, to get his secret, to know his strength. Well, all the time she had a hidden modem. She really didn't love him. She was just intimate with him to get what she wanted, okay? And this is the same in the natural. When we lay down with these different uh, people, you thinking that they got your best interest. Let me say this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. As an adulteress myself, as, as once was delivered from this, I knew that when I talked to the gentleman that I was courting, not courting, but uh, pursuing, I listened to how he talks about his wife, the negative things. And everything negative, I made sure I reversed and did the opposite. So, so you see what I'm saying? It's, it was like a, a game, mind game, you know, playing in a sense to get what you wanted. If it was material things, it was, if it's, it was fine, you know, uh, money-wise, whatever it is, you know, car, house, whatever it may be, that, that same spirit was conniving, was up, and, 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 and that, that's what I'm saying. 
It was to try to kill what's inside of you, to destroy you, okay? Uh, hopefully that makes, makes sense if you guys got, understand what, I, what I'm speaking of this uh, as well, okay? So where the term strangers refer to any person, no one legit uh, husband or legit wife. See, my prayer that God would deliver our spouses from this lust demon and and if i can if i can get a little personal right now we're going to talk about what caused you uh to continue to have this wondering eye what has caused you to to uh continue watching uh pornography uh behind your spouse's back what is causing you um to even to masturbate and you're married okay look we're going to talk about these these are things that you know we door openings that can, possibly came in from my childhood say for instance you got sodomized as a as a young man or you got you got molested as a young lady and now here it is that door open of that sex demon has came in and now i'm having dreams incubus and succubus that's a female and a male uh sex demon that's arousing me in my sleep come on that is not normal and i'm married come on let me let me let me say that let's for starters so if you having any type of dreams about another woman outside your husband or outside your wife but vice versa that's a red flag okay there's a door opening that allowed that came in possibly like i said from your childhood and even if, if it wasn't a childhood say your teenage year dad was into pornography and he uh, had all these videos and and magazines and things and in his in, in, in this little um and his toolbox and you went out there and you start looking at these little magazines and everything these playgirl um whatever they call them now magazines and, and that right there opened up a door okay and so now here it is, you married and you thinking that, okay, once I'm married, everything, I could be able to put this thing, uh, quiet this thing down, soften, you know, allow this thing to uh, uh, dissipate, but it, it does not, does, oh, does it? No, it doesn't. You know why? Because it gets bigger and bigger. If you notice now your sexual appetite has gotten overwhelming that one lady one wife or one husband is not pleasing to you it's not appealing to you in, anymore because now it's like you got we have you have a, a strong appetite of wanting certain things done to you or you want certain vice versus do you know well, that's what we talk about the prostitute when you bring in that third party into your bed will you remember bed the bedroom when god created marriage it was holy it was pure so now we bring in a third party which is a prostitute we talk about bringing that pornography bringing different type of other uh things in toys sex toys and and different positions that's a little bit unhealthy you guys know where i'm coming from and i i'm, I'm trying to remember i have kids as well you know, that could be watching this and i want to be very mindful of that so so when you allow these things to come in that 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 husband will never ever satisfy your need that wife vice versa would never be able to to stand up to that standard that you're looking for because why because of that lust of the eyes come on because of what you have entered in through pornography what you have entertained like we were talking about so once you reach that point then it's like you done already committed adultery if you just sitting there uh watching pornography while your husband is asleep and you on on a computer late at night downstairs or upstairs wherever you at you know having this time or these conversations with these different people online come on watching these pictures even communicating Come on. So even when you're communicating, now you got emotional adultery. Come on. And we're going to talk about that all, all, all as well. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. All oh, glory. Bless his name. So let's, um, you know that uh, I was saying cheating in, in, in a marriage is also adultery, right? So you cannot be cheating on your wife and tag it as 
a normal thing. And that's what she was just talking about in the video, they was talking about in the video that has become a norm. It's like, it, it, why is it become a norm? We, we, we sweep it under the rug. We're not trying to deal with the root of why you're dealing with this uh, specific thing. You know what I'm saying? Oh, just pray about it. Oh, just fast about it or whatever, whatever. And that's what deliverance uh, ministry is uh, uh, is for, is to get to the root of the stronghold. What? Why is this thing? How did it enter? When? How long has it been there? And et cetera, et cetera. Say, for instance, now we we, we talked about Freemasonry and, and, and that type of thing. That is a, 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 a another perversion type of spirit come in when you got these sororities and fraternities and and sleeping you know throwing blow, uh raping and and throwing trains on um women and and men high up women you know and men i don't know how they do it but um so that's a no, another uh form you know what i'm saying that you bring in you bring in uh, uh a curse into your family you're bringing a curse into your household okay as well and, and so the Bible uh, made us understand that God found, frowned at it and marriage is sacred, just as your body is a temple of God. So it is the temple of your temple of your wife in your marriage and vice versa. See, most men assume that they are free from consequences when they cheat on their wife. Ah, oh, we know that is a lie from the pit of hell. Let me tell you, the enemy, the, look, he gets you set up. He set those baits up and, and you grab it, you grab those baits and you snatch it up. And then next thing, you're out there deeper and deeper and deeper into it. And now you don't understand how I got in this. Why am I in a dark place? Why do I feel like I'm disconnected to God? And this is what we talking about this this thing what we talking about creeping and uh creeping out on your soulmate you know stepping out okay so first corinthians 7 verse 4 first corinthians chapter 7 verse 4 the wife does not have authority over her own body but yields it to her husband, in the same way, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but use it to his wife. See, today, Christians are the people of God, and we belong to God, and we are his children, and he is our God and Father, amen? So we as Christians, we can be, we can be just as guilty of spiritual adultery as the Israelites of, of, of old, even though we we may not be de de uh, deliberately following other dignities. See, as a Christian, we will be guilty uh, of spiritual adultery if we embrace our endorsing other beliefs, uh, doctrines, or, or religious practice that are contrar contrar contrary to the biblical teaching. See, I'm going to give you five sort of a, uh, what adultery looks like and and and, and likely uh we likely at times we don't even think about this uh, that it you know is is five categories of what adultery can look like number one is passionate adultery passionate adultery see example of a passionate adultery includes inappropriate thoughts visualizing about a person other than your your spouse fantasizing about other people as you sleeping with your spouse see visiting certain places knowing that a person you sexually attracted to will be there seeking eyes contracting a uh, contact with someone you sexually attracted to see we were talking about the eyes the number one was the eyes that's we talking about uh, so watching pornography, especially if your, your spouse doesn't know about it and looking at a different social media profiles of people that you have, have sexual interest in. And among other things, see, while this form of a, a, an infidelity may seem harmless, it will silently sabotage your marriage. Did you hear that? All of a sudden, 
You stop sleeping with your spouse. Now you sleeping in the basement, you sleeping on the couch, you sleeping in a whole different room. You see what I'm saying? That, that enemy has came in and caused a wedge in between that marriage. Instead of you guys coming together and communicating what's going on, let's be, let's be honest. Let's, can, can we be open? And that's important. Hey, might as well say, look, you've been with this person for 30 years and just go ahead and say, you know what? I don't know what's going on, but for some reason I've been having these uh, sexual dreams that that's not, not with you, with other women, with other men. Be honest. And if you got a person that understands and they said they love you, we can work through this together. We can pray. We can fast. We can come on. We can fight through this. It's just like an addiction, drugs, alcohol, whatever it is. You know, I think people put adultery in a high standard. Like that's like unbelievable. You know, I don't have to go back to this in individual if they don't co committed a, several times or committed an adultery. If I ask right now, how many women and men have have experienced of committing an adultery or been betrayed betrayed by their spouse. I, I, the whole church will probably lift up their hands because we all have experienced that or all have been uh, acute. You know, at all. I'm sorry. It's also have all been committed adulteries as 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 well. Okay. So number two is the emotional adultery the emotional adultery. See, based on emotional intimacy, emotional affairs are one of the biggest threats to relationships and because of they are often framed as innocent friendships. They aren't always the easy to detect. So even when you say you are just friends, there is a sexual tension between you and the opposite party. So when there is a problem in your relationship, you or your partner may look to someone easy to fill the void. You began to share intimate and confidential information about your spouse and ask your friends for advice. So we, so you see what I'm saying? It, it, it starts out to be innocent, well, that's that emotion adultery. Well, you you could be just going uh to going to the park, and this individual in the park walking too, and then you guys start meeting every day to walk together. Now you talking, and now y'all having conversation back and forth about you know uh your your your, your faults your, uh, of your spouse, because you know that's what it think that's what the thing does. It looks for the faults in in your spouse and have that individual to be able to be an ear, to be able to be on your team. Oh, we talked about that last week. What that word was, the, the, uh, the, fat, the, the flatitation. Um, when, when it makes, makes up in their mind that, you know, I'm, yes, yes. Uh, D-E-F-L-A-T-I-O-N, I think, that's it. So when you, when you do that, you're degrading your spouse. You're saying, you know what? I, I was never, ever happy. I've been with her or him for 30 years. And all of a sudden I woke up and I decided a light bulb went on and you need to be happy. You need to move on. And then this individual telling you, yeah, you know what? You deserve to be happy because you're a good woman and you don't deserve to be treated like that. And if, if you was my man or if you was my woman, I, you know, I, I, I would treat you much, much better. Come on. I'm just sharing it with you guys. These are the things that we talk about with Samson and Goliath. We call it pillar talk. Okay, it started over the telephone as a, a, a innocent conversation, and then it, it, it escalates. Okay, and next thing y'all meeting out, and next thing y'all creeping, next thing you don't, yeah, having lunch together. You know what I'm saying? And now you done, oh, now you don't like, oh, all of a sudden, really, really done checked out of the of, out of your marriage. You know what I'm saying? Because it's just like what it tells you, you can't love. Two masters, you love one and you hate the other. Okay. All right. So aggressive adultery, aggressive adultery. See, while this kind of adultery is difficult to see, if 
delayed, you will start to physically observe it and appear in your relationship. Cases of strong adultery incorporates wrong consideration, imagination about a man other than your, uh, uh, your spouse. See, fantasizes about other individuals as you laying down with your spouse is going to specifically spot, re realize that a man you sexual pull, pull in to will be there. See, looking for the eye to eye connection with somebody you sexually pulled in, in into it, okay? So watching lustful uh, entertainment, participatingly, uh, if you, your spouse doesn't think about it, but, um, but take a, uh, take, you, you, you just got to take an inventory. You got to be honest with yourself. Serious. It's just like, you know, I hear people say, you know, I just, I'm just a social drink. I don't drink all every day. I just drink on the weekends or when my friends come over, you know, but, uh, or maybe I have one, you know, glass of wine um, after getting off of work just to wind myself down and relax and allow me to be able, you know, justifying it. It's okay to drink. Okay. So that's the same way an adultery will do a, a person that's caught up in adultery it'll begin to justify it's look I, i've got to convince everybody that's against this thing and try to show them that what i'm doing is right come on that sounds like a manipulating spirit all day long if i can convince them to show you all the wrong in this individual and the reason why i checked out on the marriage is because i was not pleased with him or I was not happy with her vice versa however it may be instead of sitting down and communicating those tough times it's just like if your kid was on drugs you're not gonna just abandon them and just let, let them go you're gonna be there praying for them you're gonna be there if they you know want to consult in you and and give them godly wisdom you know what i'm saying you're going to be constantly keep praying for them and that's just like with a marriage if a person is it, it, i was i just got a phone call today if y'all you know this individual was married i can't remember how many years or 20, 30 years and out of the out of the 20 years they is considered you know keep going back cheating keep going back to the same person so out of that 20 years constantly cheating and so this individual was like hey you know what you know what do, do i stay in this or do i leave this and that's that's what we talk about that vow that sickness and health so that is a that is a sick sex addiction that's a addiction sex addiction that's a sickness that's what i'm trying to say yes that's absolutely is a is a is 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 a weakness it's a struggle for you let me move on guys so let's talk about the mental abuse adultery i'm sorry mental adultery don't forget to write y'all questions for me now i'm, I'm gonna check on facebook and see what questions y'all have for me and also on my zoom so mental abuse uh, adultery i'm sorry it is the one of the biggest problems destroying marriage today so mental adultery is to look with an uh, intention and conscious desire to please or justify a uh, lust to picture situations in the mind to think adultery in the mind with a person to the point that if the if the opportunity was presented you will commit the physical act See, it isn't just something uh, plaguing our relationship now. What's so sabotaged about, uh, about this form of adult, adultery is the fact that people don't take it seriously because no physical activity has been taken place. Come on. You already heard it said, if you, what, what did uh, David do? When he looked upon uh, Bathsheba, she was beautiful. And he already what? He looked at it. And already he checked out in his heart. Oh, what if I, you know, lay down? He, he was already probably premeditating stuff. Come on. Visual. So that talks about the visual adultery too with David. Amen. So the visual, visual uh, adultery. Visual adultery is committed adultery with your eye. And that's also the same with David. I was in Bishtiba. I went ahead, y'all. It's often <clears throat> deceiving 
uh, and, and and easy for those doing it not to think seriously of it because they're not committing a physical act. So many people think as long as they aren't physical touching someone other than their spouse, they are not being unfaithful. See, but the more you commit visual adultery, the more likely you are to end up in physical cheating uh, on your spouse. See, this involves you intentionally and directs your eyes towards someone because they look good or sexual appeals to you. You know, we know with a lot of times what you, you're looking for, you're looking for that, that six pack, that, that bam chest, you know what I'm saying? Built broad shoulders and everything. And then the men are looking for the, you know, Dolly Parkers and the, the Jennifer Lopez butt act side, you know what I'm saying? That that's what they put in these magazines. That's what they put in the uh <laughs> y'all know that's what that's what they put in pornography. Those are the type of things that appeals to them. Uh, uh the, the eyes, yes. And so bam. So guess what? I, I, I hate to say after 10 years or 20 years, and how about that surgery? Just everything began to start sagging and everything started look dust. You know what I'm saying? And you find out it, it was injections. It was, ah, oh, yeah, that's a whole thing, a whole different story. So yeah, or, or even, or I, I was, I was, I was remembering, I was counseling an individual and they, and they, and their husband had literally got heavy into this pornography to the point that he, he ended up, leaving his wife for another woman and to make a long story short when he moved out divorced eventually and now listen and that's what i'm saying see when you get into that pornography and you start doing them uh i'm just gonna say them extra uh uh positions and then say for instance you 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 get the new wife and then all of a sudden come on health wise you can't, you can't function, you know, you can't salute, you know what I'm saying? And so this particular person, wife, uh, the, the new wife end up leaving several times, several times, you know what I'm saying? So you, you, you see what I'm saying? So when you do those type of things, you got to think about it. God is, look, God is in restoring marriage he's reconciling marriage like never before and he's bringing them brand new okay and so and when i mean brand new he's gonna heal you of your sex demons he's gonna deliver you from the struggles amen that you've been dealing with amen hallelujah let me go ahead um so we was talking about the visual okay so so now we're going to talk about spiritual adultery so spiritual adultery, this type of adultery doesn't include unfaithfulness to your, uh, to your spouse, but yet unfaithfulness to God. See, it's truly need to do with uh, having an unreasonable affection for things of the world. So in the Bible, it's contrary to what, with, with the unfaithfulness of one's mate. So however, like a, um, like a lady flick, flicking to her sweethearts even so you have been uncertain to me O place of israel says the lord jeremiah 3 and 20 that was jeremiah chapter 3 verse 20 so sac uh, sacred texting uh, advise us that individuals that who be that who can be companions with the world or two timing individuals that having bitterness against god James 4 talks about that, 4 through 5. James 4, verse 4 through 5 talks about that. So in this section, uh, the world is in arrangement of cleverness uh, cle cleverness uh, uh, under Satan's control. So profound that the adultery incorporates any type of excessive admiring uh, uh, and it is a noteworthy uh, subject. All thoughts of the, of the, of the test. I mean, of the Old Testimony, y'all. I'm sorry. So Jesus remind us exactly how destructive that this, this shape of adultery can be. So Jesus stated that nobody can serve what we talked about, two bosses, two masters. That's right. So possibly you would dislike the one and love the other, or you would be dedicated to the one and despise 
Come on, guys, the other. So do you understand where I'm going with this? Matthew 6 and 24, Matthew 6 and 24. So it, it, you see where you could be with somebody for 30 years and then all of, all of, all of a sudden your heart comes cold hearted towards your spouse. It's because this other uh, individual has taken that place because now you guys became one. And now you follow me, that ungodly soul tie. Oh, when well, she talked about that, when you got that ungodly soul tie, now here it is, you done broke the covenant over here, over where, where the altar is clean and pure, to go over here to bow down to false gods. You know what I'm saying? To bow down to these idols. You, 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 you follow me? We, we, it's the same thing that we talked about in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, and now what's going on in the now today. See, ain't, ain't nothing changed. The game plan has not changed, okay? Amen. The enemy is still on his J-O-B, okay? We the one lacking. We the one slipping and, and, and thinking that it's okay to, do, to live a, a, a double life. It's okay to do, to do me because if, if I'm doing me, look, I y'all got to accept what I'm doing because it's, it's my time to shine. I'll just hit the 60 mark and I got to, I got to, I got to be, I got to do me. You, if you hear all that me, 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 I, 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 that's pride, definitely the reign leader. Okay, so, um, so it's critical as a defender that we abandoned the world to us and the cross before us. So no turning back. See, adultery is one of the simplest, simplest. Uh, approaches to harm a relationship. So once in a while, the harm is so overwhelming that the, the marriage can appear re, re uh, I mean, sorry, unrecoverable. Did you hear me? You see, the, the reason that adultery is so difficult to work through is, is on an account of its decreasing uh, 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 trust or which is the establishment to an, uh, any solid or working relationship. See, adultery can fall even the most grounds of bounds of the de uh, deceiving, I mean, decreeing, de uh, de uh, decreasing your relationship from the back to the front. See, despise the fact that you may not think of these offenses or the gen or genuine or genuine now. See. Uh, on the off chance that you are constantly taking an interest in these types of entrapment, they can have some destructive results, guys. Because you think about it, when you when you start, listen, at, you got a lot of people say they start off saved, loving the Lord, and then they fall off, and they what they abandoned the faith. Then they abandoned their, their spouses and then they abandoned their families. Just what? So they can do them. That sounds very selfish, doesn't it? And that's the type of world we is. We're in. People will be lovers of themselves. So that's why I tell my standards, they're standing in the gap for their spouses, is to continue to fight on your knees. You're going to have people telling you crazy. I don't know why you keep uh, 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 waiting on that individual because they done already told you. They done moved on. They done. They done gave you a divorce. They is moving on with their life and they happier than ever. That is a deception from the pit of hell, okay? Ain't no way you can be happy over here, as they said, because these are things that the enemy, look, he paints this picture pretty pretty picture because he know exactly what you like he know exactly what your needs are matter of fact he's so familiar with you he know your sin nature what you've been delivered from so let me just throw a little bit of uh old school back into you well i know you used to smoke pot back in the day so let's go ahead and bring that back to you i know you used to like drinking wine so let me throw that back into you. everything that you used to do come on that you turned away from now the enemy's giving you a little dibba dab of that let me go ahead and bring this on back and you're going deeper 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 and now you just stuck can't get out of it it's like, okay, God, I, 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 I love you, but, 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 I, I got to do me. See, God can't even speak to you because why? Because your heart is hardened, and, and, and you got a deaf ear, and you, and you, and you couldn't even see if it slapped you in the face that what is right and what is wrong. 
Okay. Let's go. Let me move on. Let me go real, real quick. So what are the spiritual consequences of cheating? Now we talked about the, the we're talking about creeping out on our spouses, right? Creeping out on my out, out, out on our soulmate. That's the that the title. So number one, and I'm gonna I'm gonna hit these real quickly. And you don't have to write them all down, but I just want to say these are the consequences of what uh, uh, cheating uh, cheating on, on your spouse does. Number one, my relationship with God will suffer from a break in fellowship. Did you hear that? My relationship with God will suffer from a break in fellowship. Next, I will need to seek forgiveness from the Lord. Next, I will suffer from emotional consequences of guilt. Next. I will spend countless hours repaying, replaying the faults, the failure. Next, my wife will suffer the scars of this abuse more deeply than I could begin to describe. Next, my wife will spend countless hours in counseling. Next, my wife uh, recovering will be long and painful. Next, um, her painful, I mean, her pain will grieve. And it's when I say her, it can be him or her. So I'm not discriminating, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Her pain will grieve me deeply and compone it, uh, compone, com, compone, where am I at? My own suffering and, 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 and shame. Next, our relationship will suffer a break in trust fellowship and intimacy. Next, we will be together yet feel great loneliness. Next, the reputations of my family will suffer loss. Did you hear that? The reputation of my family will suffer loss. My sons will be deeply disappointed and be wild. My grandchildren will not understand i don't care how i've tried to convince them what i'm doing is right but wrong is wrong okay my friends will be disappointed and will question my integrity next i would lose my job at church next my witness among neighbors will become worthless next my witness to my brother will be worthless. Next, my testimony among my wife's family would be damaged. Next, I might never be employed by a church again. Next, I might never be in a man's ministry leadership. Next, I will suffer God's discipline. Satan will be motivated at my failure. Next, Satan would uh, work overtime to be sure my shame never depart. Next, my wife might divorce me. Next, my children might never speak to me. Next, our mutual friends would shy away from us and break fellowship. Next. I will bring emotional pain to the woman. Next, I will bring reproach upon the woman. Next, if the woman is married, her husband might attempt to bring harm. Next, he might divorce her. Next, an unwanted child could be produced. Next. My part in conception might trigger an abortion and the killing of an innocent child. Next, diseases might result. Next, some might conclude that all Christians are hypocrites. Next, my business could fail because I couldn't be trust. Next, my leadership among those I have led in the past might also be diminished and impact. Next, my zeal for ministry will suffer and possibly result in others not continuing in ministry. Next, my health would suffer. Next, 
I might have to start life over again. Next. See, this sign, this same sin might be visit upon my family for four generations. I need y'all to catch that last one. Write that one down. This same sin might visit upon my family for four generations. Come on, think about it. So if you notice, it started from the from the grandfather, now the grandfather down to the son, now to the son, to the daughter. Come on, I'm just showing you. So this thing can re revisit. Why? It can revisit. Because it has access. It has legal ground to be there, be based off of the sin. So that's why we, when we, when we talk about uh, generational curses, we have to renounce that thing, recognize it for one. You can't be in denial and be sugarcoating and be acting like, oh, that, you know, that, 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 that ain't me. That, you know, that never happened to me. I'm good. I'm goody two shoe. That I'm perfect. And uh, if you see that pattern, recycling, vicious as that cycle is doing, it's you need to re put that thing out of the blood and begin to renounce that thing. Okay, amen. So next, I'm almost done, guys. So number one, we're going to talk about the disruption to spiritual reaping information. And I'm, I'm not going to go long on this because I'm almost done because I got eight more minutes to tie this up. See, disruption to the spiritual reaping, we're going to uh, reaping information. We're going to talk about that. Uh, that's coming out of First Peter chapter three, verse seven, first Peter chapter three, verse seven. Likewise, husband, live with your wives in the understanding way and showing honor to the woman as the weaker vassal, since they are, or, since they are hairs with you of the grace of life so that your prayers may not be hindered. And then Galatians 6, verse 7 through 10. Galatians 6, verse 7 through 10. For a person will reap what he sows because the person who sows to his own flesh will reap corruption from the flesh. But the one who sows to the spirit will reap eternal life from the spirit. So we must not grow weary in doing good for in due time we will reap. But if we do not give up, come on, if we do not give up, amen. That's why I tell my, my standards, my, my spouses to stand in prayer for your marriage. Don't give up. That's right. See, so there, whenever uh, we have an opportunity, let us do good to all people and especially to those who belong to the family of faith. So when a husband and wife to each other and this is spiritual little oh let me see let me see let me see little wonder most people say when a husband and a wife stay together for a long time there is some type of resemblance between them so however as a husband if you cheat on your wife you disrupt this reaping information and you share that you share with your wife so the bond you share is broken spiritual and emptiness with feels the broken bond. So this is one of the reason many marriages scatter easily when the bond is gone. So the home will what? Be in disarray. Okay? So when the head is off, the head is off, guess what? Everything else is going to fall off. Okay? Because the head can't walk without the body. So when the head is off, meaning is 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 left the building as they said, now you got you got an attack that's coming against your family, attack coming against your spouse. You know, it's a, a door opening that the enemy now can come in and he has access. You, you, you didn't give him the key to the house. You didn't get, yeah, my God. Let me go ahead. Let me move on. Let me move on. Number two, spiritual um, uh, pre, uh, preactive, pre, uh, spiritual um, pre, pro, proactive. Okay. So second Peter one and eight, Second Peter one and eight. It said, "For if you possess these qualities, I mean, uh, I'm unproactive. I'm sorry, U N P R O D U C T productive, T I V I T Y. I'm sorry, girlfriend. So yes, yeah, Second Peter one and eight. She has it. Okay. So if um, for if you possess these qualities in increasing measures, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive." in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm, so arguing, arguing, arguing um, it or, or not, we, if we had this discussion, 
when we when you cheat on your spouse as a spirit filled man or woman of God, you become spiritual unproductive. Your spiritual alerts is gone and you become unproductive. So one of the roles of a husband gives to a give to him by God is for him to what remain the head of his home. So when you cheat on your wife, you are no longer the head unless you repent of your sins and confess. So little wonder that most women complains that they no longer see if their husband the same way as before. It is it, it is as if he is empty and dry. See, cheating is one of the reasons that your spirit dies from God has left you. Okay? Number three, spiritual target, spiritual target. So yes, adultery can open the doors for spiritual attack by the enemy. So most men uh, don't know that when the head is destroyed, the home is open for spiritual attack. See, this is one of the things that cheating on your wife can cause you to be a, spirit, a spiritual attack, spiritually attacked. So you become an open target. Hebrews 13 and 4, Hebrews chapter 13, I'm sorry, verse 4 said, let marriage be kept honorable in every way and the marriage bed undefiled. See, for God will judge those who commit sexual sin, especially those who commit adultery. So, so my advice to you, keep your marriage sacred as a man of God. You must love your wife with all of your heart and cheating on her can cause your home spiritual problems. Did you hear that or do you care? Well, let's go ahead and talk about the possible outward sin, signs of adultery real quick the possible outward signs of adultery see these is these are the signs that i want you to give you heads up if you feel like you you, you was you was sucker punch you didn't have no idea that this was going to happen you never got the red flag you never got that that conversation one on one that i am not in this marriage no more i have checked out number 1 change in behavior next change in mood next change in spending pattern next change in schedule next less personal conversation next less decision of future plans next less spontaneously next less, less sexual intimacy Next, more unaccounted accounted time away from home. Next, more fault finding. Next, more emotional distance. Next, more angry at being questioned. See, Proverbs 10 and 9, Proverbs 10 and 9. It said, whoever walks in integrity walks securely. But whoever takes crooked paths will be found out. Next, here is how you can work with God to heal your marriage after infidelity. And I'm almost done because I always got to take y'all to the cross. I always want to make sure that you guys are getting your proper healing because this is a process, ladies and gentlemen. Number one, ask questions wisely. While it's, that's number one, ask questions wisely thank you so while it's reasonable to initiate asking the, your spouse to give you the details on what happened and when and who and with and how and after you become fully informed don't ask any more questions unless doing so will really help you heal don't let yourself become obsessed with the details of your spouse's affair because doing this uh, so will only torment you and prevent you from moving on to healing. Proverbs 14 and 1, Proverbs 14 and 1. The wisest of a woman builds her house, but falling, falling with her own hands tears it down. Ecclesiastes 10 and 12, Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 12 says, the words of a wise man mouth wins him favor, but the lips of a fool consumes him. Number two, remind yourself 
often of God's promise to you in the Bible. I'm gonna repeat that. Remind yourself often of God's promises to you in the Bible. See, even though your spouse has been unfaithful to you, God will always be faithful to you. Read and meditate on God's biblical promises to you. Absorb them into your soul so that you can deal with your situation from the right perspective. See, let God promises give you the confidence that you need to pour your deepest thoughts and feelings out of him in prayer and believe that that his grace is enough to lead you through the healing process. Philippians 4 and 19, Philippians 4 verse 19, it said, and my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and his glory in Christ Jesus. Number three, learn successful coping static strategies. You hear what I said? Learn successful coping strategies. That's it. Life de daily demands won't stop when you're going through a crisis. So you need to learn how to cope with your outgoing responsibilities, such as taking care of your children and keeping up your work and while you're struggling. Ask God to empower you to deal with your new norm and give you the wisdom to adjust your life appro uh, appropriate ways so that you can still function effectively. See, pray for the peace that only Jesus can give you, ladies and gentlemen. Peace that will help you overcome any challenge you encounter. Isaiah 41 and 10 talks about that. Isaiah 41 verse 10 said, fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed for I am your God and I will strengthen you and I will help you and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Oh my God, that's, a, that's, that's what I'm talking about. That's a good father. Number four. Look at your spouse the way God does. I think I tell these this all the time when my married women's on on morning uh morning prayer. It's on Mondays. Look at your spouse the way God does. See, pray for the right perspectives of your spouse so that you can see that he or she must likely didn't didn't plan to sin so grieve uh so grieve grievously, but that your spouse is just like you an imperfect person who's capable of serious sin, despise good intentions. So if he or she drifts away from God, ask God to give you a compassion for your spouse brokenness and help you treat him or her gracefully as God treats you when you sin. First Corinthians 16 and 14, first Corinthians 16 verse 14 said, everything should be done in love. Amen. Next, keep in mind, that faith you show while going through the crisis can inspire others to begin relationship with Jesus. See, that's it, y'all, did y'all catch that? Keep that in mind, that the faith that you show when going through the crisis can inspire others to begin re a relationship with Christ. See, people are, are wait, watching how you react to the pain that your spouse infidelity has brought into your life. So if they can see how Jesus is working through your life, empower you to respond in faithful ways. They'll be drawn to Jesus himself and may become saved as a result. So try your best to trust God as you heal and look forward to good coming out of this uh, bad, uh, bad somehow as God does his work. First uh, Timothy 1 and 19, 1 Timothy 1 and 19, it said, keeping faith and a good conscience, which some have rejected and suffered shipwreck and regards to their faith. See, let your grief teach you whatever God wants you to learn, ladies and gentlemen. Don't try to suppress your grief and rush past it. Instead, let your fully experience and go through each stage of greed to learn valuable lessons from it. See, ask God to reveal whatever he wants you uh, to learn from your greed and, and to help you make uh, whatever changes you uh, change you sense him to lead you to make a draw, draw closer to him and become a strong person as a result. In James 1 verse 2 and 8, James 1 Verse two and eight, and I'm not going to read the whole thing, but consider it as pure joy, brothers, my brothers, my sisters. Whenever you face trials of many kinds, 
because you know that the testing of your faith, what produces perseverance. And you know, you can go on and then chapter, uh, I mean, verse seven and eight says that person, and I jumped all down. That person should will not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. So that's why I tell you, when you're praying about a situation and God is showing you that situation and you standing on it, and then you got those naysayers and then you got those corner Christians that's going to come behind and say, girl, no, you don't have to, you don't, you don't have to settle for that, girl. You don't, you don't have to be no revolving door for this person. You ain't got to be a, a doormat for that person. Let them go them the people you also need to disconnect and let go as well because they're not coming from a a clean place they're not coming from a clean altar what i mean by that they're not coming from a pure place they're not coming allowing this holy spirit to speak through them they're coming from a broken place themselves absolutely so how do you expect somebody to, to give you spiritual advice on something when they they 90 percent of the time they they in carnality they they already uh, got unforgiveness in their heart towards their spouse or towards their, you know, whoever. Okay, let me move on, guys. And I gotta go, I gotta move on. So learn to trust, learn to trust, ladies. You can learn to trust in your marriage again if you first deepen your trust in God and decide right now to trust God with every part of, li of your life, your marriage, but also your own, your other relationships, your work, your health, your leisure times, and et cetera. See, instead of worrying about how you can trust your spouse again, choose to trust God to work in your spouse life and place your trust in God's spirit who lives inside your spouse rather than your spouse alone. See, pray for God to help your spouse gradually regain your trust by sacrificing everything that could lead to more unfaithfulness, such as avoiding being alone with people on the opposite sex or giving uh, you the complete access to the information about his or her activities and et cetera, okay? Let's number, let's, let's go to Proverbs three and five. And I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I got about three more to go. And I'm, I said four, three. Proverbs three and five says, trust the Lord with all of your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Cause that's why your understanding is already jacked up from the flow up. Cause you trying to figure it out and you trying to, Oh my God. And you speaking that thing. Oh, you just like venom, like poison spitting out. Come on. Nah, put that tongue on the submission. Kill that, kill it. Sanctify, crucify that, that tongue. How about that? Ooh, let me go ahead. Let me go ahead. I'm trying to hurry up y'all. <laughs> Replace I got to do this again, guys. I got to I gotta do this video live and do it, take my time and allow God to walk us through this because I'm rushing. Replace, replace anger with forgiveness. Replace anger with forgiveness. Let your gratitude for how God has forgiven you on your own, of your own sins, motivate you to obey. His call to forgive others, we, I mean, who have sinned against you, including your husband, or spouse, however, don't wait to obey until you feel like forgiving because you likely never will feel like doing so. So instead of choosing to act in a forgiveness, a forgiving way towards your spouse, treat her or him with kindness and welcome the positive uh, changes in him, him or her makes that uh, make it rather than bringing up his or her past sin. And God will gradually change your feelings in the process. Amen. Ephesians uh, 4, verse 31 through 32. Ephesians 4. I mean, I'm not, yeah, Ephesians 4, verse 31 and 32. It said, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and commas and, sh and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another. Tenderhearted. Forgive one another as God in Christ forgave you. Number eight, lean on the strength of other people. That's why I love healing and mending ministry because we we uh glean from one another. We are our sister's keeper. Iron sharpens iron. In this in this group, I love it. I love it. See, turn to some people that you can trust to support you in your healing process and provide uh, accountability and, uh, and encouragement to your spouse to help him or her heal. See, confess your struggles to them while they listen and, and ask them to pray for you and your spouse regularly. See, thank 
them for the, their, their care and the trust God to work through them to help both you and your spouse. First Thessalonians 5 and 11, first Thessalonians 5 verse 11 says, therefore encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. Amen. Number nine, do whatever you can to save your marriage. Do whatever you can to save your marriage. I don't care if people talk about you crazy, you done lost it, you a witch, or, or you stupid, or whatever they may, the negative stuff they may say, the naysayers may say, and the corner Christians may have to add to, block them out. Stop answering their phone call. Let, let them know, look, I'm in a good place. I'm healing right now. And I don't need all that negative. And you're not going to say what thus says the Lord. And you're not going to speak positive over me. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Who Jesus, help us, God. As long as your spouse is repenting and willing to work on restoring trust in your relationship, do whatever it takes to work on your marriage to try to save it. Rather than looking for excuses to leave your marriage, look for a reason to restore it and willing to do what necessary to avoid the, the, uh, the tragedy of divorce and reveal your trust in your marriage. Colossians, Colossians, Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 says, Since God chose you to be the holy people, he loves you. Uh huh. Most clothing yourself with tender hearted mercy and kindness and humility and gentleness and patience. Did y'all get that? Out of them all, what do you recognize? How do you identify yourself in those tender hearted, mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience? Well, guess what? Your marriage is going to produce those fruits. It will. It certainly will. Last but not least, number 10 says, ask God to make your marriage better than new. Woo, did you catch that? Ask God to make your marriage better than new. See, when God does things, but restore things, he makes it brand new. As a matter of fact, he take it right back to the manufacturer, right back to the creator. Come on, he, he brings it back. Oh, fool. My God, keep praying for God to, to transform your marriage and expect that he is he does so. Your marriage can become better than it, it was before your spouse's affair. See, because you and your spouse have learned to trust God in a deeper way, uh, Lamentations 3, verse 22 through 24, Lamentation, Lamentations 3, verse 22 and 24, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed for his compassion never fails. So they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. You heard me? I will wait on him. Amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead, guys. And I'm going to say this prayer. Repeat this prayer after me. And um, say this. Jesus, I come before you now. And I desire to, to be free, to free myself from the spirit of anger, hatred, pride, and resentment. Break the chains that binds me to these spirits that keep me from living in the freedom of true love. Your love, the love of your most sacred heart, Jesus. I confess to you my anger, frustration, hatred, pride, and resentment about my spouse. And just repeat this as many times as necessary for anything that you are struggling with. I hand these uh, situations or, or, or persons over to you. This is, this is what we're going to do. That's what we're asking the Lord to do. I hand over to you, repeat, all of those that have injured me in any way. I lay down all my anger, frustration, pride, hatred, and resentment at the foot of the cross. In Jesus' name, I renounce the spirit of anger 
in the name of Jesus. I renounce the spirit of pride in Jesus' name. I renounce the spirit of hatred in Jesus' name. I renounce the spirit of resentment in Jesus' name. I renounce the spirit of revenge in Jesus' name. And I ask that you pour your most precious blood over my soul and cleanse me from all stains of sin. Jesus, free me from the bonds of anger, hatred, pride, and resentment. Free me from any desire for revenge I may hold in my heart. In your name, Jesus. I renounce all thoughts, spirits, or desires that do not come from you and that do not lead me to you. Jesus, lead me, on, me only experiencing your love. Let me only experience your love. Jesus, lead me to your arms of the Father. Jesus, fill me with the peace of the Holy Spirit. Enter into my heart, Jesus. Heal me at the core of my being. Then I beg of you, Jesus, tuck me away in your most sacred heart, my refugee, my safe haven, my eternal resting place. In Jesus' name, we say amen. Amen. So if you felt that emotions was arising, got teary-eyed, began burping, began yawning, whatever it may be, just go ahead and post that in your comment. Amen. Amen. As God is breaking us free. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and get into our book. Amen. And if you guys can be so kind to turn to page 30, and if you can uh, okay. well, start, please. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. Ready? Yes, ma'am. Okay, page 30. The, ex the Spirit of Extramarital Affairs. 1 Corinthians 7 and 1. Now concerning the things the whereof you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. First Corinthians 7 and 2. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. One of the most hurtful and destroying spirits in a marriage relationship is the spirit of extramarital affair. It goes directly to the core, the innermost part of your spouse's heart. An affair defines a romantic attachment or episode between lovers. An illicit or informal sexual relation. In the Bible, plain, simple sin. Number one, the spirit of selfishness. This spirit makes a spouse totally disregard the feelings and care of their mate while they proceed to fulfill their lust. Number two, lust spirits are not only for people for affairs. This type of lust, desire, or craving can be based upon a longing for something that promises enjoyment or satisfaction. Three. This type of self centered is based upon the demonic emotional Satan has them feel they could go they could get by putting their hopes, trust, and needs in their hands of someone who is not their spouse. Number four, the spirit of extramarital affair will manifest in a person, although their mate is giving them sex every time they ask. In some men, there is a spirit of just loving to. Okay, sorry about that. Um, in some men, there's a spirit of just loving to have women. Solomon suffered from this problem and it took him down. He began to serve their gods and fell away from the Lord, his God. First, first Kings 11, 1. But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of the Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidians, and the Hittites. First Kings 11 and 2. Of the nations concerning with the Lord said the children of Israel, ye shall not go to them, neither they shall come in, in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. First, first Kings 11 and 3. 
And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. The charming spirit and seducing spirit, a sweet demon with endless passion. Charming define a quality which exerts an, irre an irresistible power to please, attract, fascination, and allurement. To practice witchcraft on, on or drawing someone by magical powers. For the record, this spirit will work in either males or females. So when you are praying against these spirits, the person may be different, but the manifestations are the same. Romans 16, 18. For, they are not, for that they are searched, serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches, de deceive the hearts of the simple. Proverbs 26, 28, a lying tongue hateth those that are afflicted by it, and a flattering mouth worketh ruins. Psalms 12 and 2, they speak vanity, everyone with, an, with his neighbor, with flattering lips and with a double heart, they do, do they speak. Psalms 12 and 3, the Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things. A, people who have a charming spirit have sweet demons with so-called endless passions. They will tell you, tell you things your mate never does. 2 Samuel 13, 15. Then Amnon hated her exceedingly, so that the hated wherewith he hated her with greater than a love wherewith he had loved her. And Amnon said unto her, Arise, be gone. Number one, people with charm and spirit seem to be patient and caring. They make you feel as if you are number one. Also, the charmer will be interested in the same things you are. After all, how else will you fall in the demonic trap of an extra metal affair? Flattery defined. To make seem more attractive than a cell. To make them, to make feel pleased or honored by gratifying the vanity of a person. Excessive, untrue, or insincere praise. Exaggerated compliments or attention. People with flattering and charming spirits will say just what you want to hear to get the, their hooks in you. A person with charming spirit knows how to compliment. Charming spirits carry a host of spirits with it to do its own, to do its handiwork. Spirits of false love, false compassion and understanding. Spirits of seduction, deceiving spirits, hidden spirits, and hatred of men and women, and the spirits of whoredom. Much like Amnon, David's son, after you have swallowed the game hook, line and sinker, then the dark side appears. The true hate and rage. Why? Because the charm and spirits work along with marriage, breaking the spirits to destroy the marriage and not create one. 2 Samuel 13, 15. Then Amnon hated her with a very great hatred. So that hatred with, with which he hated her was greater than the love which he had loved her. And then Amnon said to her, Arise, be gone. RSV Bible. Number five. Suddenly, as if it without warning, the charming spirit will show us true colors of hate and anger by attacking your character and self-worth. Number six, you're left thinking, how could someone so wonderful who treated me so well act this way towards me? Then you'll wait to realize that the spirit of extramarital affair has destroyed your marriage. Rage to find emotional excitement induced by an intense displeasure to become violent and angry. Fury, temper, wrath, rampage, anger, and outrage. These are all manifestations of the spirit of rage. And then lovers of themselves and those without... Wait a minute. Sis. I'm sorry, sis. Hold up, hold up. We're almost done with this chapter. I mean, it's, it just got one page, one more page. Brian, can you go ahead and finish that up? What's or and or? Who is or and or? <laughs> what, what page are we on? We on? Oh, I got it. I got it. R R. Uh, we on page. Uh, she's so funny. Page thirty-five at the top. Lovers of themselves. Okay. Lovers of themselves and those without natural affection in extra marital affairs. Second Timothy three and two. For men shall be lovers of their own selves covetous boasters, proud blas blasphemers, disobedience to parents, unfaithfulness, and unholy. Second Timothy, Timothy 3 and 3. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontent, fierce, 
despisers of those that are good. Alienated define. The act of estranging, cut off, or act hostile. A grave disorder of mind that impairs one's capacity to function safely or normally in society with others. These people have spirits of self-love and spirits of selfishness. They are lovers of themselves and will show false affection until they get what they want. Then they will then they will drop you like a bad habit. A. There is a lot of charming and manipulating going on in a person with these types of spirits. Charming define. Having the power to attract or exert an, irres an irresistible compelling influence on a person. To practice witchcraft on. Manipulation define. To influence especially by cunning, con convincing a person so you can control and use them. User define. To take unfair advantage of or to control or play upon by art felt or insidious seductive means. Many of us have in the past walked under spirits of deceit in relationships that have never been addressed in the fullness by the light of God's truth. Which in fact, if addressed, we would find that we still have charming spirits, spirits of manipulation, and using spirits that must be exposed because they will not stop even in marriage. Luke 8 and 16. No man, when he hath lightened a candle, covered it with a vessel, or pulleth it under a bed, but setteth on a candlestick that they which enter in may see the light. Luke 8 and 17. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall be known and come aboard. Demon groupings, extramarital affairs. Running out spirits, false romance spirits, curse of affairs, evil soul ties, demonic attraction, fleshly lust, spirits of lust, curse of lust, seduction spirits, spirits of whoredom, block sex with your spouse, Lying spirit, charming witchcraft, en enchantment spirit, rape spirit, charming spirit, flattery spirit, control spirit, sorcery spirit, rage spirit, and marriage breaker. Oh, the end. All right, so let's go ahead. We're going to open the floor if you guys ain't got any questions. Man, so when we do grouping uh, spirits, that, that's, what, that's what you begin to command out of the individual. I command the running out spirit, and we call it the vagabond spirit. You ever heard me say vagabond spirit? That's the running out spirit, okay? That's, the same, that's, that's in the same um, category. Uh, let me see. False romance spirit. So... Um, what we, what we call that effectuation, what they call that, um, like you effect, effect, uh, effectuated with somebody, but it's not true true love. So that's false romance. So they they, they put up a a, 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 a a type of romance. Say for instance, they romance, they romance, that false romance is more higher than when you were with your spouse. So when you with the mistress or with the, as they call it, OW, other woman, you, you, you romance that person because you're trying to will them in. You're trying to, you know what I'm saying? You're trying to get, you know, without all that you can get out of them. Especially if that person, listen, if that person is money motivated and that person has a lot of material things and that individual has that same mindset, then a, guess what? Kindred spirits going to connect. Broken spirits going to connect. You see what I'm saying? Okay. You said infatuation. Yes, ma'am. You said it. Yes, ma'am. Infatuation. Go ahead. Somebody had a question? 
you answered it before I even asked it. You answered it before I even asked it, so thank you. Oh, oh you ain't out of, okay, a question. Okay. And so, so thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, just, just unmute, y'all. If y'all have any questions, you, you know, you can just unmute or put them in the uh, chat and the comment, I'm sorry, and I can go ahead and address it. Um, and then uh, when we see the seducing spirit, seduction spirit, it talks about um, seducing spirit is just like Deliah. We were talking Jezebel and Deliah. Thank you. They both got that same uh, identity, uh, characteristic, seducing spirit, okay? Um, whoredom, whoredom means like a prostitute, you know, sleep with people for money, sleep with people for material things, sleep for people for whatever, if it's sexual pleasure, you know, if that person is pleasing them in areas that maybe your spouse never ever, you know, done or done before, but has stopped doing it. And now this individual is coming, the other OW or the OM comes in other man, that's other man. O-M is other man and O-W is the other woman. Uh, comes in and, and, and do uh, turn cartwheels. We just use it as an example. I'm trying to keep it clean, y'all. Keep it clean. But then you got a uh, curse of lust, fleshly lust, spirit of lust. Okay. And then we, talk, we talked about that, the three... Uh, three things that was temptation that what the enemy does he started with the flesh of the eyes flesh of the uh of the lust of the flesh of the lust uh oh, flesh lust of the flesh flesh of the lust lust of the flesh and pride of life god i was just i must be getting a little tired y'all it's about that time and then the flattering spirit you know that flattering spirit is just that the spirit that just tell you all type of lies you know it tells you exactly what you want to hear. It's got that violin broken out to tell you, you beautiful. You the only woman in the world for me. I'll never leave you. I'll be, I'll be your Boaz. I'll be your, you, your knight in shining armor. You know what I'm saying? I'll even get a tattoo with your name on the show. Yeah, I'm, I'm serious about you. No, the devil is a lie. I will not get no tattoo. No man. Not even my husband's name on man. I'm sorry. I don't do tattoos. Blood cutting is not my my deal. Not not, not my deal. Okay. Um what else? What else, guys? What else? What else? What else? Oh, charming. Did y'all hear that charming and witchcraft go together? Charming and witchcraft go hand in hand. So just think about a person as Delving in new age, and they got a charming spirit on them, and so they could even cast a love spell. I didn't hear. I hear a lot of this going on. This stuff is for real. Casting love spells on on these women and on these men, and then you see that these uh, spouses are falling out of love with their with their with their spouses. So these love spells, these little charming, these stuff, these little witches are putting little, you know stuff and they got pictures on their altars about with them and um mm, it's a whole different story but yeah um a sorcery spirit we already know sorcerers is, is in the same uh, category with uh python sorcerers uh divination okay I had to think about it. I was I was like at the top of my head. I'm I'm getting tired. So yeah, you hear the python. You hear sometimes people was like wrapped around this thing and can't get loose from it. They entangle with this thing. That's like that 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 python spirit is suffering the life out of them. Mm -hmm. It's suffocating them. It's disconnecting them from the Holy Spirit. Come on, y'all. Uh, questions. Come on. I don't want to. I'm up here. Bouncing for time, y'all, because we almost done. Any questions? Really, yeah. Uh, go ahead, friend. You got your hand up, baby. Go ahead. I'm you. I have a question about, um, like, if somebody, if there's. Like, let's say you're walking and you're calling, you know, you, you've truly, this time you've been safe for real. You've been, you know, um, you've been engaging in prayer, you've been fasting and you've been in God's word. And 
he's changing you and changing your heart and transforming who you used to be. Can a can like let's say your spouse had um, an affair. Could that woman be um, like a sabotaging spirit because because God protects you, Holy Spirit protects you, and the enemy cannot infiltrate, but uses like another entity, like um, like like the enemy knows, like you said, he he knows he's familiar with you, like familiar spirits. So that entity is is assigned to destroy you, you know, is assigned to you, but can infiltrate through the spouse. Could that could okay. that demon be assigned to take you out, but sense you know, you're in God's word, you're, you know, you have your whole armor on, you're using your shield, you know, you're fasting, but because there's no foothold, can the enemy use somebody such as your spouse to try to get to you because that part of your life is not, you know, surrendered or that part of you is not submitted or you don't have understanding or, you know, you're, you're just, you know, there's still idolatry there. Girl, you got me on here scratching my head. I don't know if it's time for me to go to bed and my, uh, my brain just went on lockdown. Cause she, there she goes. She always taking me around the corner, dropping me off and leaving me there. I told her don't do that. Okay. So answer that. I'm going to try to answer that. Holy Spirit help. Let me answer your daughter's question. So I, I wrote down a fair. Could could that other woman be there to cause sabotage in the marriage? Now I would say absolutely because you got to think about what the enemy does. He's is 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 his his job is to kill, steal, and destroy. So destroy uh, however means necessary if he has to use this uh, other woman to come in to sabotage that marriage then and then um it lures that that spouse into that trap he falls in that trap then he he can't see you know because he got blinders on now he got blinders on and so all he you know so all right now he is he, like they're 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 at a, you know it's like how 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 would I be like mesmerized, you know, by this individual, you know, and, and and it's it's like this person is saying all the right things because the enemy knows. The enemy knows, like I said, he knows what you what, what buttons to push. He know what you like. He like he know what's the sounds. You know, you know, you know how to how to talk to you, all that. So, yes, and I would say, you know. When you have a calling on your life, and I just um, spoke about that, you know, it, it normally happens like that. It, the enemy was, you know, target the ones closest to us, your children, your spouse, you know, to get you to get you off track. But you have to see. That's why I said you have. To, we were talking about you. Have, that's why you have to know your component. You have to study the enemy. What you know, what he does. You know what I'm saying? And how he, what he does to use people to get to you. Because only, listen, can't no outsider come in and step over you and, and run run rings around you. It's the ones that's closer to you. The ones outside you, that you, that stuff bounces off of you and you you want to let it affect you. But the ones that you closer to love, those are the ones that it, it tends to kind of touches our home flake. It touches our heart, you know? And so the enemy knows that. He knows that. I remember when I got my first calling uh, to pastor and to do ministry in my own home. Of course, my husband wasn't in agreement with allowing people to come to our house to do ministry. He said that, hey, I'm going back to my old church. I don't see, you know, God telling me to, you know, start a ministry in our home. And I'm not going to be there when you do the lunching, the ministry. So just imagine me lunching the ministry, family, friends coming in husband is MIA. He's not even there. You know, how did that feel? 
Well, guess what? The sermon that I had to preach on was, Lord, teach me how to love again. And I'm telling you, God used me within that tw less than an hour because I experienced that. I, that's life application. You ever notice you when you you teaching on a sermon or something like that, you actually going to walk that thing out. You're going to be a life application. So it's just like with this lesson that I was talk on today, was teaching on today, I had to get hit. I had to get several hits, you know, to get me off my course, to get me off, to say, I'm not doing this. That's why I was telling Elizabeth, I couldn't even do my makeup right. You know, I was just so, I was just overwhelmed, you know, with stuff. But I knew that this is this lesson has to go has to go forth because it's some people that needs to be free. Amen. Amen. So that was a good question, friend. I hope I answer your question, sweetie pie. Oh yes, 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 definitely. Definitely. It makes it makes a lot of sense. Yes. Amen. 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 All right, we got a new uh, person on the on the uh, line. If you have any questions, you're more than welcome to unmute as well. And if not, we're gonna exit on out of here. I don't have any more questions. Amen. Um, Michelle S, I see you watching. Amen. Praise God. All right. Um, any questions on Facebook Live? On Zoom, I mean, I just, you know, uh, unmute a, a, a minute, guys. You know, I just, you know, just to talk about this. This is a short lesson. Uh, I'm gonna say unmute if y'all have anything to add to it. But it was, it was straight to the point. You know, um, I like the fact that it's, it talked about that charming spirit, and I tell you that, and I now I know that the charming spirit and witchcraft works hand in hand. So we know witchcraft is a, a, the sin of rebellion. A rebellion is a sin of witchcraft. I'm sorry, and and so when it said if 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 if, if without warning, he said the charming spirit will show its true colors of hate and anger by attacking your character and self worth. So after a while, the charmer will will flip the script, and and the true identity will come alive. And then that it, it will begin to, um, you know, dislike you, get angry at you, and begin to attack your character, you know, and, and let and you, I, I I I hear it all the time, you know, when when people get in they have their affairs and everything or in an affairs, they they degrade their spouses. They tell you know you're a horrible horrible mother, you know, you just, you know, this and you just that and and that you know, and, and it will um and it does that, it will do that because of the simple fact because they got it, it got uh, other things in their ears, sweet nothings in their ears that's talking oh exactly what they want to hear. So now that's why I was saying that you notice that you can't love two masters. You can't serve two masters, you know, so you hate one, of course, and love the other. But anyway, uh, any other question? Any other questions? Let me see what else, else. Oh, the flattering. Oh, when it talks about the flattering, you know, too. Um, when a person is flirtatious, you know, just always, you know, just over, over, over flattering, you know, to me. That's just uh, another form of manipulation too, you know, trying to win that person uh, heart or win them over. So it, it tells you that even um, with the flattering, it, it, um, that's that's just like the the charming spirit, complimenting you every every day, you know. All right. I think if a man is taking care of their wife and family and the other woman will want to take the wife's place. Oh yeah, that's a lifetime movie. Yes, that is so true. If if your uh, spouse is a good provider and and he's talking to the other woman and she sees that you know you're a provider and you take care of your family and your children and you know 
do do an excellent job, then of course that jealousy kicks in and it begins to want to take that place of the of the wife. It'll start writing down, believe it or not, what's the last name? Jones. Uh they'll start writing in they in a book. Oh, Mrs. Sally Sue Jones. I'm just using that as an example. And then then start going around your friends and family and uh um not well, you know, just in general, you know, trying to take that place, you know, uh of the of of the wife or the spouse, vice versa. You know, if if that, you know, it it, it gets bold. It it'll get bold. Eventually, like I said, when you in there too deep, like undercover cop, you in there deep so deep that you don't even care no more. Because the enemy telling you, you got to live your life. You only live once. So go out with a bang. Because when you go out of the bang, guess what? You're going one way and that's straight down. Down. Because that's what the enemy's trying to do. He tries to take out the head. Take out spouses, vice versa, however means necessary. You know? So that's why we have to continue standing in the gap, praying. Amen. So hopefully I answered that question, sweetie. Take it. Yeah, I hope I answered that question for you, precious. I did. Okay, good. Amen. So, so amen. So, um, any other questions? I like that. I like that. that was a good question. That was a good question. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? All right. Well, if that's not no other questions. Very good lesson. We we can wrap it up. And I'm going to go ahead and let Fran pray us out, if she will be so kind, just to pray. Amen. And, and you guys continue, you know, walking in love. Don't give up. Stand on your marriage as a standing in the gap for your marriage. Stand in the gap. Don't matter what people are saying, how you feel. Sometimes your emotion might get all off, off track and every now and then. But, you know, just stay in God's presence. You know, I, I just keep continue praying, praying without ceasing. That's what he said. Be like that one lady. What she was saying, she was a king. She went to the king, I'm sorry, and she kept agitating or kept being persistent, asking the king for whatever it was. And the king was like, look, just go ahead and give her what she wants. Just get her out of here. <laughs> Say, so, man. All right, friend. Praise God, our dear friend. <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. In Jesus' name. Wow. This lesson was just by far rich, rich, rich meat. Wow. It is, it is, I think a lot of us are just, you know, marinating on it and just starting to meditate. And I know questions will start coming up later. Um, and wow, wow. The Lord has definitely spoken tonight in Jesus name. Father God, we just thank you, God, for this lesson. We just thank you, Father God, for your encouragement, for your love, for your peace and your joy, God, for marriages in Jesus name, God. Father God, give us the wisdom. Give us the words to speak, Father God, over our husbands in Jesus name. Give us tongues of fire. Give us tongues of prayer, God. Give us hearts of fire for Father God to be, Father God, the manifestation of your love from the throne room in Jesus name God Father God empower us God with the dominous power Father God from the throne room of heaven in Jesus name God Father God as, as Jesus is so are we God that we possess Father God the, the fire of love in Jesus name God let our touch Father God be a manifestation of your, of your touch God when you touched our hearts in Jesus name Father God let our words Father God penetrate to our husband's heart. Let it touch their inner ear in Jesus' name, God. That we, Father God, demonstrate love, peace, and to live in harmony, Father God, with our, with our husbands in Jesus' name, God. And we say, Father God, that the enemy, that we don't give no place to the enemy, Father God. That he has no place in our marriages. He has no place, Father God, in our family in Jesus' name, God. That we cut off the head, Father God, in Jesus' name of division, God. God, that we say, take your hands off of our children. Take your hands off of our husband's heart. Take your hand, Father God. 
Sia, Ki under the Bashori under the Basiki under the Bashi. Father God, that your word, Father God, is a lamp to our feet in Jesus' name, God. That we continue, God, to look to the throne room of heaven for guidance, Father God, to hear your words in Jesus' name, God. Give us the right words to say, to speak with love and with power, God. Father God, that we can continue, God, to turn the hearts of men, Father God, the hearts of the stony hearts, the hard heart and the cold heart back to you in Jesus name God. They, Father God, when we touch our husbands, God, that you Father God empower our hands to love them in Jesus name. That we touch them with the love of God. That we speak to them with the love of God in Jesus name, God. That we reach for them, God, with love and understanding and and tenderness and mercy, God, just as you love us, God, just as you, Father God, move closer to us, we move closer to them in Jesus' name, that we live with them in harmony, that we live with them in peace, that we live with, with, with them, Father God, with the kingdom, with the king's heart in Jesus' name, God, to, to demonstrate, Father God, kingdom marriage, Father God, to the unbeliever, Father God, to the unlovable in Jesus' name, God, that we demonstrate your love. We demonstrate your covenant, Father God, Jesus, that your purpose and your light and your salt, Father God, will manifest through our marriages in Jesus' name, God. As we continue, God, to walk on this narrow path, God, continue, Father God, to strengthen us. Continue, God, to give us the strength, Father God, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. The love of the Lord is our strength. The word of the Lord is our strength in Jesus' name, God. Let the words be salted on our tongues. Let the light, Father God, shine through us in Jesus' name, God, that we do not get weary in well-doing in Jesus' name, God. Father God, that we always reach for love. We always reach for understanding. We always reach, Father God, to be silent in Jesus' name, that we think, Father God, before we speak to our spouses in Jesus' name, God, and that we turn his heart back to the Father. We turn his love back to the Father in Jesus' name, God, that he is the head and not the tail that he is blessed and not cursed in Jesus name God that we that he takes his rightful place God among the family he takes his rightful place God to speak father God to his wife to speak to his children in Jesus name to speak for you God to shine for you God to be on fire for you God in Jesus name God father God that we continue to hold up our husbands God to you God and that we cover them in prayer we cover them father God God in love. We cover them, Father God, so no, no enemy, Father God, no Jezebel, no Delilah, no, no hindering spirit, no divisions, the, the, the spirit of division, Father God. We give them no place in our marriage in Jesus' name. We muzzle them and we bind them in Jesus' name, God. We take authority over them, God, and stand in love and in the blood of the Lamb by the words of our testimony in Jesus' name, God. Father God, we we, we, Father God, magnify you, God. We magnify you, God, and we look to you in Jesus' name, God. Thank you, God, for being our shepherd. Fa Father, thank you for being, Father God, our Father in Jesus' name, our Abba Father, God. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you, Father God, for showing us the way, the truth, and the light, Father God. We thank you for our general, Father God, in Jesus' name, God, for her, her obedience, God, to bring us this word to enlighten us, God, and let the words follow, Father God, fall on good ground in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Jesus, and glory be to your name. Amen and amen, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, hallelujah. Well, we just want to say thank God for the lesson on today. It was good meat, as we always say. We ate good. I pray that you apply it. Amen. And I also want to thank you all for sowing a seed and healing in many ministry. We appreciate you guys. Every, every, every seed. Amen. Amen. Amen for you all. And you want to sow, you know, you can go straight to our cash out, which is dollar sign healing M2. That's H-E-A-L-I-N-G-M, the number two. So we thank you guys. God bless you. See you guys Thursday at 6 p.m. at Devils, Demons, and Deliverance. Amen. Thank you. God bless. Good night, guys. Be encouraged.
Recording has stopped.